Sorry, good morning. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, wonderful. All righty. Um, let's see. Thank you. Welcome. I'm so glad to be at Eterna Con this year. This is my first year, but I'm very excited to have joined the team and really talk about um, different things to improve and to just get on board and and um, discover different ways to improve uh, diversity, not just in Eterna, but also just in STEM in general. And so this particular presentation um, is about Eterna Rise, which was a program put together at Prairie View with Stanford University. Um, Dr. Lorenzo could not be here with us today. Thank you so much. Um, but I will try my best to go through uh, what we did at Prairie View. And hopefully if you all have any suggestions, any thoughts on how to continue to improve this particular program, they are very welcome. So um, like I said, I'm, from, uh, I'm actually a professor at the City University of New York, but I am a Prairie View alum. So I am happy to represent Prairie View today. Let's see how I advance my slides. Okay, there we go. So you turn rise, like I said, it was a Stanford University and Prairie View A&M University collaboration. And Prairie View University is a um, historically black college and university or university. And it was um, in order to really push this limit like how do we get more people of color how do we get more women and stem and get things moving to where there's better representation um, which i'll be talking you'll hear me again a little bit later talking about representation in stem um, but how do we do this starting at a level where people can start to learn as an integrated model um, and, and all people start to learn as an integrated model using things like Eterna. So Eterna Rise was a program, um, they implemented it in fall of 2020. It was a senior seminar in genomics at Prairie View. Um, with the Eterna, it was a class project that they had to, to uh, create using Eterna. So it was a class of mostly women and African-Americans uh, as this is a historically black college. Um, and then guest lectures were women and um, or minority. See if I can close this. Okay. So we turn to rise the team, um, Dr. Hannah uh, Wayman Steele, um, and as you see, some of our other uh, developers in Eterna and researchers. And so you know several of those names, I'm sure. So Eternal Rise, as I've mentioned, is a um, integrated learning approach. And so the idea was to, um, like I stated, to really get the word out there. How do we continue to push the envelope where it goes beyond just the people who are involved, but really getting people aware of this particular uh, system and this game and, and citizen science and really doing that. So this course was built to or it was integrated into a, a, a course that was already going on, which was um, a genomics course. And so it was focused on RNA biology and that's the study of RNA structure and function and its relation to human disease. And so this introduction to the students at Prairie View um, had visiting speakers where they had readings every week. There was group research article presentation. Um, there was an eternal puzzle design, which went forth throughout the whole uh, course. Um, and I meant to tell you how many weeks, I believe it was 15, 16 week course. <laughs> and then um, there was a final 10 minute PowerPoint presentation where they had to talk about their selected RNA molecule, how it's significant to uh, a health or disease, and then to really explain their eternal puzzle that they created. And this was as a group. And then they also had a final exam. And then what the Prairie View research part of Eterna did was conducted a survey of control and experimental groups. So with this course, I just, I'm not gonna read all these to you, but wanted to show you uh, just some of the topics that what went forth during this particular course, like RNA biology review. There even were things like a biosciences graduate research and introduction of how um, different areas students could go into once they graduate and, and move further in this particular path. There was role of RNA chemical modification in disease. And also some of the speakers were as far as Mexico and um, all over the place, Yale University um, and even Northwestern. 
So the object, objective of Eternal Rise, or this particular, um, what I'm going to present today, was the, to evaluate the impact of Eterna as an educational tool on career choices and increased interest in STEM careers. And so we wanted to know, once these students kind of go through this, looking at the control and experimental groups, where was it really an impact? Um, did we see that Eterna really was making a point to um, get more students interested in STEM using this particular thing? And so with the study, I'm going to present um, the control had about 32 students, not about, they had 32 students answer the survey. And then in our experimental group, 27 students. And this experimental group are those who actually participated in the course. The control group was supposed to be those um, who did not have any interaction with Eterna. However, um, and I, you'll see this maybe a little later, that we had some contamination. Some students were answering that they loved Eterna, although they were in the control group. So it's like, great, but then it's also like, that's not <laughs> what we plan to happen there. Okay. So just a classification of the study group. So we had in the experimental group, as I said, this was a senior seminar. So we had most seniors, um, whereas we did have one or two juniors in the um, Exper I mean, an experimental group. The control group, though, we saw uh, students in all areas. And so, like I said, it was, it was to have this idea that we got different levels of students who would not have any, any exposure to um, Eterna. That was the, the goal there. So even with the genders, um, we see that the control group had mostly female, which is a little bit different than we usually see with studies um, about STEM. Um, so this was good in this area. Um, and also with the experiment, so same thing. Um, we only had, and it doesn't really show here, I think we only had one answer non-binary in the experimental group, um, and then a couple who preferred not to answer. When they were asked the question about if you, to describe yourself, so uh, we wanted to see what was the demographic there. So Hispanic, um, that's yes, you're Hispanic. Uh, we just had, I think it was two, and I meant to put those numbers on there, two Hispanic in the control group um, and just one in the experimental. But as you see, the majority was African-American or Black, once again, at a um, historically Black university. Um, although we did see others, which was really good to see this, um, differences in, in the opinions here. Looking at sexual orientation, we have, um, as you see here, the majority were um, heterosexual or straight, although we did see some representation in experimental group on a variety there. Um, so it was good to see that representation there. Experience with STEM. We asked several questions, um, even one I didn't get to put in, but it asked, what did you watch any science um, science cartoons or science shows when you were younger, elementary school? We did find a lot of people mention, um, yes, that's a good question. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. Um, <laughs> we talked about um, experience with STEM, uh, the shows, I'm sorry, the different shows that watched um, as they were elementary school students. And a lot of people mentioned like Bill Nye, the science guy and things like that. These are very interesting. Um, kind of facts. So what was your first kind of interaction with that? And so when we think about um, experience with STEM, the first generation college students in this particular group of 41%, so almost half, a little under half, this was, the, they are the first in their family to ever go to college. Um, and so when you, you, usually when you think about STEM, it's that you're participating in research, there's been some time to really do things like that. And so um, I'll go to this question really quick about why is sexuality even important? Um, there is a question on there. Once again, another thing I didn't get to put in there. What kind of led you to STEM? And there were people who answered that their sexuality was a factor and even being, even in participating in STEM. Now, unfortunately, this is just a, quality, a quantitative research, so we don't have the reasons they feel that way. And so it, it's moving to this point where we are trying to be inclusive, as someone mentioned, um, have diversity, but also not in the fact exclude people from wanting to participate. So we want to make this a world um, 
of Eterna that it, it's not saying um, only these type of people can be involved. These are the only people that can be involved in this particular um, program. That's not what we want to do. And so this is, okay, <laughs> this is the reason um, we do include those kind of things. We want to know. We want to know what keeps people away um, and things like that so that we can make sure that we're including them. That's just one one thought. Okay, so um, no close family going back to experience with STEM, um, members working in STEM, no close family members, almost half or over half for the control group had never had no close family that was interested in STEM. Um, K-12 to science, K-12 science teachers um, having the same race or ethnicity or gender, 63%, um, which was really interesting, um, are experimental. One thing I think we missed um, an opportunity here to ask, um, which I didn't even think about it before, was are the are these particular um, students? There are a lot of students at Prairie View who come from um, are, come internationally. So in a lot of cases, like if you get someone from Nigeria, chances are they had uh, teachers that were Nigerian. And so sixty three percent looks really high to have the same race and ethnicity as a black person, African American. Um, but there's also things like living in in um, African American environments and things like that. So it's, it seems a little high to me, but maybe that's about right. And then even the gender. So most people had uh, female teachers. It looks like 88 um, percent. And then even in the control group, 94 percent had genders uh, in science that were the same as theirs. And college science professors, um, same race or ethnicity, 81 percent. Again, these are undergraduate students at a historically black college. So this is not as surprising um, as one would think. <laughs> oh, too fast. So I'm just gonna jump right into some of the other survey information we found out. The operating system, and these are just some little facts here that I thought could be interesting that most of the students use for this particular uh, program, this class was, um, I meant to do this a little different, a Windows for laptop or desktop. So most people use Windows, about 44%, 33% uh, use Mac. Some use their Android phone, some use their Mac phone, you see there. And somebody said they don't know. So I'm guessing maybe they didn't do it. <laughs> um, and then it's asking um, how fun did you find Eterna as a video game? And so, with this kind of thing, again, we don't have the qualitative data that is the next step to see why did you answer the way you did? What were some of the reasons that you felt it was not fun? It could be simply that this was a course, they had an assignment that they had to do. Sometimes students don't like assignments. So this could simply be, I did not like this assignment. It was not fun because I had to do it, you know, um, but we don't know that yet. So we're working on the next step being to find out a little bit more, but over, let's see, 50, almost 50%, which would be, so almost 80% said it was some level of fun. How worthwhile did you find Eterna as the citizen science project? We found that, uh, again, somewhat worthwhile, worthwhile, we had the majority there, so almost 45% felt that it was worthwhile. Um, again, we don't know why it, it was not worthwhile, but it, I suspect it is simply because it was a student project. Would you use a certificate from Eterna in applying to graduate school, medical school, or another postgraduate program? This was very interesting, um, which over 80% said yes, they would. And so um, one thing I didn't put in here was that just about 50% of the students said they did know about the certificate uh, program using Eterna. Um, there's still a large number that did not know about it. Um, which I know this probably was explained in the course and things like that. And so the idea that they would use this for their next level is a really good uh, thought process for our developers, for our users, things like that. So knowing that this is available, that it can really increase your chances um, on your application is good. How worthwhile were Eterna Labs? So students had the, had the opportunity to participate in Eterna Labs where uh, the majority felt they were somewhat worthwhile. Um, so we still had about 11% who didn't answer, but 55% felt like they were worthwhile. The perception of Eterna, or 
Turner and the perception of science. And I put these a little close. So the first one, did it improve or what was your take on um, Eterna and how you feel about science after being involved in Eterna? And this is what I was saying about the control group getting a little contaminated. We had several <laughs> in our control group who said Eterna was great. You know, they feel like it has improved, which they weren't supposed to even have interacted with Eterna. But good news is that um, nearly 50% felt like Eterna improved their perception of science. Now, although 40 still said, you know, or 41 said it didn't change it, um, only one person said it worsened. <laughs> Again, uh, I say as a student class, we have some different, we need to dig a little further to see exactly why they felt that way. For the second one, um, here, the course has improved my perception of science, and that is, is Eterna Rise. And so the implementation of Eterna in this particular course didn't improve your, your perception. And so 74% said it did. Um, only 18 or 19 said it, it didn't change it at all. But good thing is that zero said it, it didn't worsen it. So no one felt it didn't worsen. Oh, I thought I had one more. But Yes, um, <laughs> that's possible if they felt like trolling. This is this is a possibility. Um, so the next steps, I just wanna quickly talk about that. As I've already stated, we would like to do more qualitative research. So looking at the students a little bit more. So tell us why you felt like this wasn't worthwhile. What could be approved to make this a little bit better for you? What do you think the class could, how could a class benefit from um, using Eterna? Um, would you prefer to be in different competitions or things like that? Like ask different questions to really find out not just how they feel like it would be better or, um, but also to, to ask questions that really can affect Eterna as a whole. We also want to talk to the Eterna developers, find out their experience and their perspectives and things like that. What do they feel has helped them along the way, has brought them in, wanting them to be involved, as well as the players. So we want to hear from you. We want to know what you feel. Do you feel Eterna is great? Do you feel it could be improved in this way? Things like that. We want to know all of those things um, moving forward. And then our goal um, move, um, and possibly in the next, for this next semester or the next um, is to incorporate Eterna Rise into more courses. So making this a regular thing and not just at Prairie View, but how do we expand beyond that? How do we start moving into other uh, colleges and universities? How do we into, integrate into other courses? And although this is a genomic class, how about what if we did it in engineering or what if we did it in other areas and things like that? So. Um, this is the main thing. I think that's all I had. If there is no J in front of my email, it should just be Carmen S. Williams at gmail.com. I'm not sure what time I started, Jonathan. So hopefully, hopefully I did good on time, but I'd welcome any questions. This was just a quick view of what we did with Eternal Rise. I'm looking forward to doing more uh, very soon.